Hubble has been orbiting in space for over 34 years, achieving remarkable success in its mission. Although it wasn't initially designed to observe objects within our solar system, it has consistently captured extraordinary moments that would have otherwise gone unnoticed. Not every planet has its own dedicated mission, and there's much more to explore in our solar system beyond just the planets. Join us as we take a journey through our cosmic neighborhood, traveling from Earth to the farthest corners of the solar system and uncovering fascinating objects that you may have never heard of, all thanks to Hubble's sharp observations. Our adventure begins with a closer look at our nearest neighbor, the Moon. Due to the Moon's large apparent size in the sky, Hubble is unable to capture its entire surface in a single shot. Additionally, other missions, such as NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, offer much higher quality images of the Moon. As a result, Hubble's time is better spent on other projects. However, in 2012, Hubble captured a fascinating image during a rare event, Venus passing in front of the Sun. Why observe the Moon during this event? Scientists used it as a giant mirror to detect subtle changes in light caused by sunlight scattering through Venus's atmosphere. These variations provided insights into the chemical composition of the atmosphere. While Venus's atmospheric makeup is already well understood, this experiment tested the accuracy of the light scattering method for gathering such data. Hubble often uses this technique to examine exoplanet atmospheres by monitoring distant stars as planets pass in front of them. Since the sun's brightness prevents Hubble from observing it directly, scientists have utilized the moon as a reflector to gather the necessary data. Although capturing the entire moon poses challenges for Hubble, its innovative approaches continue to lead to groundbreaking discoveries. This is not the case with Mars. Hubble regularly observes the planet, providing a full view, something that orbiting spacecraft cannot always do. These images offer valuable insights into dust storms, seasonal changes, and other weather phenomena, which are vital for planning rover missions and advancing our understanding of Martian weather for future predictions. In one time lapse, a massive dust storm sweeps across Mars, obscuring its surface features. In the background, Mars's two small moons, Phobos and Deimos, can be seen rapidly orbiting the planet. Their swift motion is particularly striking in the 42 minute sequence. Another time-lapse highlights Phobos, the larger and closer of the two moons, capturing its movement over just 22 minutes. Phobos orbits Mars in just 7.5 hours, making it the only moon in the solar system that completes an orbit faster than its planet's day. As we move past the inner planets toward the gas giants, we encounter the asteroid belt, a captivating region full of intriguing objects. Among them is the peculiar asteroid 64478 GT, which has drawn the interest of Hubble. Despite its misleading name, this object, which bears a striking resemblance to a comet with its twin tails, is actually an asteroid. Located in the asteroid belt, it was imaged by Hubble in 2019. Why does it have a tail? Scientists attribute the answer to a phenomenon known as the YRP effect. Solar radiation applies a small but consistent force on irregularly shaped objects, which influences their movement. Under certain conditions, the rotation speed of asteroids can gradually increase. In the case of asteroid G, its 3.5-kilometer-wide body has been spinning faster over time and now completes a rotation every two hours, close to the maximum speed an asteroid can endure. This rapid rotation generates centrifugal forces that are stronger than the asteroid's gravity, causing loose material to be ejected into space. This ejected material forms the tail, and over time, Asteroid G will likely break apart entirely. Like many other asteroids and comets, G isn't a solid rock, but a fragile rubble pile held together by weak gravitational forces. The asteroid belt, home to a chaotic population of 1 to 2 million asteroids larger than a kilometer, along with countless smaller ones, is a dynamic region. To illustrate this, let's take a closer look at P210A2. At first, it appears to be a typical comet, However, a closer inspection of its nucleus reveals an unusual filamentary structure. Surprisingly, this isn't the comet's nucleus. It's not even a comet at all. What we're witnessing is an extraordinarily rare event, a collision between two asteroids. The X-shaped structure near the nucleus is made up of debris from the impact, 
with rubble being ejected in four directions. Some of this material is drawn back toward the center of mass by the weak gravitational pull, while particles in the tail have escaped completely. While the majority of asteroids in the belt maintain relatively stable circular orbits around the Sun, they risk being pulled off course if they stray too far, similar to the behavior of comets. This can lead them into the powerful gravitational influence of Jupiter, often referred to as the solar system's vacuum cleaner. Jupiter's immense mass, which constitutes nearly three-quarters of all non-sun matter in the solar system, gives it a dominant gravitational pull that can drastically affect nearby objects. A notable example of this occurred in 1994 when comet Shoemaker-Levy 9, measuring about two kilometers in diameter, ventured too close to Jupiter. The planet's gravity not only captured the comet, but also tore it apart, breaking it into multiple fragments. As these fragments collided with Jupiter, it marked the first ever direct observation of an extraterrestrial impact. Interestingly, Shoemaker-Levy 9 had been captured by Jupiter nearly 20 years earlier and had orbited as an active comet, an unprecedented event in itself. However, its orbit eventually brought it dangerously close to Jupiter's surface. The planet's tidal forces ripped the comet apart, and just a year later, its fragments struck Jupiter at a remarkable speed of 60 km per second, over 210,000 km per hour. Impacts on Jupiter have generated fireballs with temperatures exceeding 23,000 degrees cells, soaring an incredible 3,000 km above the planet's limb. The most significant impact created a dark spot stretching 12,000 km, roughly the size of Earth and released energy equivalent to 6 million megatons of TNT, more than 600 times the combined power of all the world's nuclear weapons. While other impacts have been less dramatic, they've still been captured in photographs, supporting the idea that Jupiter serves as a cosmic vacuum cleaner, protecting the inner planets of the solar system from devastating collisions. In addition to its immense gravitational influence, Jupiter presents stunning phenomena that fascinate astronomers. For example, Earth isn't the only planet with auroras. While auroras on Earth are visible to the naked eye, they are actually most brilliant in ultraviolet light. So the Hubble Space Telescope's ability to detect ultraviolet wavelengths, we've been able to closely observe these mesmerizing displays on other planets. Jupiter's auroras are the easiest to study, as the planet is not only the largest and closest of the gas giants, but also possesses a powerful. The magnetic field and intense radiation on Jupiter generate exceptionally bright auroras. In 2016, while the Juno spacecraft was on its way to Jupiter, scientists took the opportunity to measure the solar wind and study its effect on the planet's auroras with the help of the Hubble Space Telescope. This collaboration enabled Hubble to monitor Jupiter nearly every day for several months. The results showed that Jupiter's auroras are hundreds of times more intense than Earth's, with a radiant power of 100 terawatts. Unlike Earth's auroras, which occur sporadically during solar storms, Jupiter's auroras are continuous. This finding suggests that solar wind is not the sole driver of Jupiter's auroras. Data from Juno reveals that the planet's powerful radiation belts contribute charged particles to the atmosphere through its magnetic field lines. Furthermore, the aurora's radiant energy is explained by alternating currents in the magnetic field, rather than direct currents, a phenomenon that would not occur with direct current energy transfer. After examining Jupiter itself, let's turn our focus to one of its most fascinating moons, Europa. This icy moon may be home to the closest potential extraterrestrial life to Earth. Hubble has provided stunning views of Europa, considering the vast distance. Europa is one of Jupiter's major moons and stands out as one of the top candidates for life in the solar system, not on its surface but beneath it, within a subsurface ocean of liquid water. Europa's close orbit around Jupiter creates extreme tidal forces, known as tidal flexing. This process generates heat, which scientists believe keeps the ocean beneath Europa's icy shell warm enough to stay liquid. Various missions have searched for evidence to support the existence of this ocean, with Hubble playing a key role. While spacecraft like Galileo and Voyager captured higher resolution images during their flybys, they lacked Hubble's capability to observe ultraviolet light. 
Hubble has detected possible plumes of water vapor erupting from Europa's surface. If confirmed, this volcanic activity could suggest a liquid interior, lending further support to the ocean theory. Since the initial detection, numerous plumes have been observed on Europa. Hubble's instruments were also used to identify salts on the moon's surface. While most missions typically use infrared imaging to examine planetary surfaces, since many key emission bands of substances fall within the infrared spectrum, sodium chloride, common salt, is primarily visible in the visible light range. This limitation caused Galileo to miss detecting these salts. However, Hubble, operating in visible light, confirmed the presence of sodium chloride across Europa's surface. This finding suggests that the salts likely originated from the subsurface ocean, transported to the surface by the plumes and deposited there. The presence of sea salt on Europa is particularly intriguing, as it hints at the possibility of hydrothermal activity on the ocean floor. On Earth, hydrothermal vents support diverse ecosystems, making this discovery an exciting lead for future exploration. Unfortunately, sending a submarine mission to explore Europa's hidden ocean is still likely several decades away. Let's continue our journey through the outer planets, with our next stop, Saturn. Since the conclusion of the Cassini mission in 2017, Saturn has lacked a dedicated spacecraft, leaving the Hubble Space Telescope as our primary tool for studying this gas giant. Hubble regularly observes Saturn, tracking atmospheric weather patterns and seasonal changes. While Cassini studied Saturn for only half a Saturnian year, Hubble has become essential in filling in the gaps with valuable data. Among the most remarkable events captured by Hubble are massive storms, some spanning thousands of kilometers across Saturn's surface. In addition to its scientific contributions, Hubble also provides awe-inspiring images of the Saturnian system, highlighting its immense beauty. Here are some of the most stunning examples. As we approach the final leg of our journey, let's stop by the first of the icy giants, Uranus. Like Jupiter and Neptune, Uranus also has storms visible on its surface and auroras near its magnetic poles. What's particularly fascinating is that Uranus's magnetic poles do not align with its rotational axis, adding to the planet's unique characteristics. Uranus's rotational axis is tilted so severely that the planet seems to roll along its orbit, making it unlike any other planet in the solar system. This extreme tilt also results in the rarity of solar eclipses caused by Uranus's moons. The first recorded instance of a moon's shadow crossing the planet occurred in 2006, as the previous alignment in 1965 predated the development of telescopes capable of observing such distant phenomena. During this landmark observation, the Hubble Space Telescope captured a shadow crossing Uranus's surface, offering a detailed view of the planet's atmospheric bands. Since then, Continued Hubble observations have revealed seasonal changes in Uranus's atmosphere over its 84-year orbit. When one pole is tilted toward the sun, the atmosphere lightens in color, forming a large cloud cap during the summer. This feature gradually fades as Uranus moves toward its equinox. Since Hubble is only 34 years old, it has witnessed less than half of a Uranian year, leaving much more to uncover about the planet's seasonal behavior. Let's now explore an extraordinary discovery made by the Hubble Space Telescope, Hippocamp, the smallest known moon of Neptune. Without the telescope's advanced capabilities, we might never have even realized this tiny moon existed. The outer ice giants Neptune and Uranus have been largely neglected by space agencies with only one close encounter, the Voyager 2 flyby in 1989. As a result, our understanding of these distant planets is still quite limited. Without Hubble's observations, that knowledge would be even more scarce. One of Hubble's most significant contributions came in 2013, when it identified a new moon, which was later named Hippocamp. While Hubble has discovered many moons, especially around Jupiter and Saturn, Hippocamp is particularly intriguing because it may be a fragment of Neptune's much larger moon, Proteus. Proteus, which measures about 400 kilometers across, shows signs of a violent past, including massive impact craters ranging from 50 to 100 kilometers. It's believed that one of these impacts shattered Proteus, sending debris into orbit around Neptune. Hippocamp, which is about 35 kilometers in length, 
and has an irregular shape is thought to be the largest of these fragments and orbits Neptune at a relatively close distance. As we approach the conclusion of our journey, let's turn our attention to Neptune. While Hubble wasn't originally designed to observe our solar system, in 2015, it dedicated more time to studying the ice giants, enabling annual observations of these distant planets. This effort has enhanced our ability to monitor seasonal changes in their atmospheres. One of the most notable features of Neptune's atmosphere is the presence of colossal storms stretching across thousands of kilometers. During Voyager 2's flyby in 1989, a massive storm, later named the Great Dark Spot, was seen, resembling Jupiter's Great Red Spot. However, unlike Jupiter's persistent storm, Neptune's Great Dark Spot has since disappeared. New storms have emerged and faded over the years, with the most recent being observed in 2018. This storm lasted several years, but it is now believed to have dissipated as well. Although the data is still limited, scientists suggest that, similar to Jupiter, Neptune may have atmospheric bands moving at different speeds. The interaction between these bands might create vortices or storms where they converge. Once a storm forms, it drifts across the planet, sometimes crossing between bands. However, when the storm loses its energy source, it gradually weakens which seems to explain the transient nature of Neptune's storms. Currently, Hubble is the only observatory capable of tracking these atmospheric changes, as storms on Neptune and Uranus are nearly invisible in most light wavelengths. Fortunately, Hubble can observe these planets in the ultraviolet spectrum, offering a unique view of their weather patterns. As we've reached the final destination on our journey through the solar system, with no more planets to explore, our tour is coming to an end. But before we conclude, there's one more intriguing dwarf planet to highlight, a distant world beyond Neptune that Hubble has studied. Introducing 2007 O10, or Gong Gong, a name that might surprise you. Despite being the third largest dwarf planet in the solar system, following Pluto and Eris, Gong Gong isn't widely known.